Oh, coffee. Yep, I know you were excited to see that dog. Not so excited. Um, you know, so we saw last time when we were studying Galatians that Abraham had started a covenant with God based on faith. And that covenant cannot be um, changed by another covenant. Now, I want to read this part of Galatians because it's very important. This is Galatians 3.10. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now, if you read this, is that a Habakkuk? No. Is that Habakkuk? Yeah. Habakkuk. I believe so. And if you read those laws, th these are some pretty extremely like bad things. Sexual sins that a, a normal person wouldn't um, want to engage in. Um, things like that. Like if you were doing a confessional and someone came to you and said, I did these things, you would just be shocked. You know, you're like, whoa. Um, in fact, I looked at the list and I'm like, I don't know if I even know anyone that's done any of these things. I mean, I hope not. <laughs> but, you know, it's really funny. That's not the point. That's not the point. The point is the covenant. The, in the nature of the covenant. The covenant made with Abraham has a nature that's almost alien to the covenant of the law. And a lot of this law has to do with blessings for the, for the Israelites uh, once they cross the Jordan and go into the land. Now, I don't want to go too far on that. In fact, I would say take that with a grain of salt. Don't fully trust me on that because I haven't done enough study on it. But it's just kind of a thought I'm riffing on a little bit. It's like, man, I, so many of these promises were about if you go into the land and you don't keep these covenantal laws, you're going to be cursed. And um, we see, obviously, historically, some failure there. But to be right you know, vertically with God, um, you, you, that first covenant cannot be ignored. Okay, but again, make up your own mind on some of that, but it's good when you're teaching sometimes to know, to express your limitations, okay, and, and to let you know that I am just kind of thinking off the cuff on some of these things. But, okay, I want to go over this again. This is really important. For all who rely on works of the law or under a curse. So you can see why I think you should read this with an unbeliever. Pray for me. There's a guy at work who claims to have, I'll go into the details of the story at some point, because uh, God helped me combat some of this. He, I can verify that this guy speaks to demonic sources. Now, I look, I'm not a charismatic I'm Southern Baptist through and through. I'm con I'm convicted on being Southern Baptist. I love Southern Baptist doctrine. I'm uh, some will call us the frozen chosen, but um, I um, but I'm not going to close myself off to things that God's going to do. And this was something that one day I'll talk about it. He just I needed God to do something in order to get get to this guy, and I'm going to invite him to study Galatians. He's my next person I'm going to try to study Galatians with. Right here even if they know nothing about the Old Testament, even though they know nothing, nothing about covenantal practices with Yahweh and all this, they can, they can understand this. Okay, it's really important. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be anyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. This is covenantal thinking. Justified by the law. Covenantal thinking. Now, it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, the, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith. See, it's a different covenant. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. 
Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. And since the covenant was made with a Gentile, who's Abraham, before it was made with Jews, before you had the covenant of laws with the Jews, I would suggest you read John 1 again and look at the significance of the beginning. It is significant that this law with, with Abraham preceded, I'm sorry, this covenant with Abraham of faith preceded the covenant of law with the Jews. Okay? It shows that that covenant is superior to every sex, uh, subsequent covenant. If, again, if you don't believe me, I guess we should wrap all this up with John 1. I'll eventually read John 1 here because it makes it pretty clear that God asserted things at the beginning and because it was before the things that came later, it was inherently superior. That's a whole nother... Uh, video I would have to do to talk about that.